Does the concept of superdeterminism, where everything is predetermined and there's no room for randomness or free will, challenge our understanding of reality? This is the proposal that physicist Sabine Hossenfelder, following in the steps of John Bell, puts forth. She suggests a world where everything, including our thoughts and actions, results from an invisible, predetermined script. Hossenfelder's stance on superdeterminism has sparked much debate. In essence, she proposes that quantum mechanics is incomplete and that hidden variables exist, influencing everything that happens, including our personal decisions. However, she doesn't give any specifics about what these hidden variables in superdeterminism are or how they function. In her view, a non-deterministic world just doesn't add up, yet a world void of choices undermines rationality altogether. Critics argue that Hossenfelder's superdeterministic view is not only unscientific but also via its denial of free will undermines rationality altogether. Bernardo Kastrup, who holds a PhD in philosophy and computer science, has referred to Hossenfelder's stance as a fantasy, criticizing her for not providing any substantial evidence or explanation of these hidden variables. Specifically, in his 2022 article, the fantasy behind Sabine Hossenfelder's superdeterminism, Bernardo Kastrup states, If I were tasked with looking for hidden variables, just as I once was tasked with looking for the Higgs boson, I wouldn't know even how to begin, because we are not told by Hossenfelder what they are supposed to be. She's just furiously waving her hands and saying, There has to be something, I have no clue what, that somehow, I have no clue how, does what I need it to do, so I can continue to believe in a physicalist metaphysics. Likewise, in his 2022 article, Does Quantum Mechanics Rule Out Free Will? John Horgan states that superdeterminism doesn't specify what the hidden variables of quantum mechanics are. It just decrees that they exist and that they specify everything that happens, including my decision to write these words and your decision to read them. Hossenfelder and I argued about free will in a conversation last summer. I pointed out that we both made the choice to speak to each other, Hossenfelder sternly informed me. Everything is physics. You're made of particles. I felt like we were talking past each other. To her, a non-deterministic world makes no sense. To me, a world without choice makes no sense. Indeed, a world without choice makes no sense is an understatement. Denying free will undermines rationality altogether. Specifically, rationality requires a thinker who is in control of thoughts. Yet under determinism, a thinker is an effect caused by physical processes in the brain. Therefore, in order for determinism to ground rationality, a thinker, an effect, must control physical processes in the brain, a cause. Yet no effect can control its cause. Conclusion, therefore, determinism cannot ground rationality. Furthermore, a study conducted in 2018 by Nobel laureate Anton Zeilinger and his team titled Cosmic Bell Test Using Random Measurement Settings from High Redshift Quasars pushed back the most recent time by which any local realist influences could have exploited the freedom of choice loophole to approximately 7.8 billion years ago. This essentially excludes any such hidden variable mechanisms from 96% of the space-time volume of the past light cone of the experiment extending from the Big Bang to today. Yet instead of accepting these experimental results indicating the existence of free will, Hossenfelder chose superdeterminism. She, in her appeal to superdeterminism, is basically arguing that we cannot trust what the experimental results of quantum mechanics themselves are telling us because because events in the remote past somehow conspired to give us erroneous experimental results today. As should be needless to say, if we cannot trust what our experimental results are telling us today, then empirical science is, for all practical purposes, dead. In conclusion, Hossenfelder's appeal to superdeterminism has been met with significant criticisms. Critics such as Bernardo Kastrup and John Horgan argue that it undermines rationality, ignores experimental results, and therefore rejects the scientific method itself. In effect, Hossenfelder's superdeterminism is anti-scientific in that it places her a priori philosophical belief in atheistic naturalism above any empirical evidence that might question it. Moreover, and to repeat, for Hossenfelder to deny the reality of her own free will is for her to deny that she has the capacity to make rationally coherent arguments, 
in the first place. As George Ellis himself once quipped about arguing with those who deny the reality of their own free will, why bother arguing with them? They are not responsible for what they are saying. While I greatly respect Hossenfelder's past work, especially her critique of string theory, apparently even the brightest among us are prone of being made fools when we dogmatically cling to our a priori philosophical beliefs in the face of all contrary reason and experimental evidence.